Hello and welcome back to Unbounded Operators, the video series where we talk about linear maps that are not continuous in general. And in today's part 6, we will talk about the so-called closed graph theorem, which connects closed operators to bounded operators. In fact, this already explains the name of the theorem, because closed operators are exactly the operators with a closed graph. However, we have learned in the last videos that in general, these operators can still be unbounded. Ok, but before we start with the formulation of the theorem, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or on Patreon. And you might already know, you can download additional material with the link in the description. Well then, without further ado, let's start with our closed graph theorem, and I should say, it's the closed graph theorem for Banach spaces. Therefore, our two spaces x and y that we need to formulate linear operators are now normed spaces that are also complete. And there you should know, this is exactly what we call a Banach space. Indeed, the completeness is important here, because later we want to use the open mapping theorem. This one you might know from the functional analysis series, and it turns out it's heavily related to that formulation here. Ok, but let's first see what we have here. Namely, we have our linear map T here with the domain DT and usually we just call it an operator. But now we need a little bit more, more precisely we want that the domain of T is a closed set in X. In fact, this implies that DT is a Banach space again. Hence, you could also rewrite this assumption and say that dt is exactly the space x. So it's exactly the same thing. What we want is that the domain of our operator is a Banach space. Because then we have a very nice equivalence for the terms we have already introduced. Namely, the operator t is closed if and only if t is a bounded operator. And there please don't forget, for linear operators, boundedness is equivalent to continuous. So this means, in this special case here, continuity and closeness describe exactly the same thing. Therefore, it's called the closed graph theorem, because it tells you, in this case, if the graph of T is closed, then we already have a bounded operator. Ok, then I would say, let's immediately write down a proof for this nice fact. And since we have an equivalence we want to show here, we need to write down two directions. And I would say we start with the easy one, which means we go from a bounded operator to a closed operator. However, to make our notation here a little bit simpler, let's always assume that the domain of t is equal to x. And as I have told you before, this assumption is without loss of generality. In some sense, we can just restrict our operator t to the smaller Banach space. Ok, and now we want to show that our operator t, which is bounded, is also closed. And there you already know, we can do that by considering sequences. And what we need as an assumption for the sequence is that the sequence converges to a point x in x and that the images also converge to a point y in y. And now if we can show that t applied to x is actually y, then the operator is closed. However, here in our case, we can use a very strong assumption, namely that the operator t is continuous. So you just need to know that for continuous maps, you can push the limit into the function. Hence, if we explicitly write that down, we have t of the limit of xn. And by assumption, this is the point x and it already lies in the domain of t. So of course, the domain here is not a problem at all. However, please don't forget the other assumption here, that the limit txn is already given as y. So in other words, you can say this left hand side here is equal to y. So what we have is that t of x is equal to y and it holds for all sequences with this assumption here. So more precisely, we have exactly this implication here and this means that the operator t is closed. But of course, we already knew that this direction here is not the hard one. Therefore, now let's think how we can prove that a closed operator is also bounded. But please keep in mind 
we only show that under the assumption that the domain of t is a Banach space. Ok, for this proof now, let's assume that t is a closed operator. So this implies, exactly by definition, that the graph of t is a closed set. So you write, the set gt is closed in the Banach space x times y. Therefore, if we see gt as a vector space with the norm from x times y, then gt is also a Banach space. So this is already a very nice conclusion, because it means we can define operators on this space. And you might already know which operators we will define here, since we want restrictions to the space x and the space y. In other words, we will define projection operators. And therefore I would say a good name is p with index x and p with index y. Both should have the Banner space gt as their domain, and then they should map to x and y respectively. And now you can already guess what the two operators should do. If you take a pair from gt, they should map it to the first component or the second component. In other words, both operators are really simple in the definition. In fact, it's not hard to see that both definitions give us linear maps and they are also both bounded operators. This is not hard to write down at all, but an important fact we can use here. And another fact, which is easy to show, holds for our operator px. Namely, it's a bijective operator, because the space gt is the graph of a map t. And the defining property of a map guarantees that each x here occurs only in one of the pairs. And here please don't forget, the domain of our operator t is exactly the whole space x. Ok, and now comes the crucial fact, we have a bounded linear operator between Banach spaces that is also bijective. And for such operators, we have the famous bounded inverse theorem. This is related to the open mapping theorem and you can find it in my functional analysis series. Indeed, there it's part 27. And now as the name suggests, this theorem tells us that the inverse of such an operator is also bounded. So px inverse as an operator from x to gt is also a continuous map. And here, please don't forget, for this conclusion here, we needed Banach spaces. Ok, then let's go to the next step and please recall, we want to show that t is also continuous. Hence, an idea would be to write t as a composition of continuous maps. So t goes from x to y and the question is, can we make a detour with our projection maps? This means we first go to the space gt. And now we know we can do that with the map px inverse. And here you should know, by definition, it sends a point x to the pair xtx. So maybe that's also something we should write down here. And at this point, we already see that px inverse achieves more or less the same as the operator t. The only thing we have to do then is to project back to the space y. And this, of course, we do with our operator py and what we get is tx in the end. So the picture is correct and we can write t as a composition. So it's py after px inverse. And usually for linear maps, we don't write a composition symbol. But nevertheless, it's a composition of continuous maps. And therefore, the result t is also a continuous map. This means if t is closed, it's also a bounded operator. And that is now exactly the statement of the closed graph theorem. And one immediate important conclusion for us for unbounded operators is the following. If you have a closed operator between Banner spaces that is unbounded, then the domain of definition cannot be the whole space. For a closed unbounded operator, the domain cannot be a Banner space. And that's exactly the reason why we have to deal with these domains in the first place. So we still want to work on the whole Banner space but the definition for the operator cannot be the whole Banner space. Ok, then I would say, let's continue this discussion with the next videos.
So I really hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.